Vegas bad boy of podcasting is an entertainment based wrestling program. The opinions share are that of the host and their guests. Some celebrity voices are impersonated and usually not well. This program is not intended for kids and certain adults. Listener's discretion is advised. You have been warned. Now let's get ready to podcast. This is a special edition with our guest, Shaw Guerrero. All right, welcome to another edition of Vegas Bad Boy of Podcasting. We have some of our bad boys here. Some of the others are out and about, but we're here. Simon Street, how you doing? Doing real good. How's everybody out there doing? Good, good. Matt Michaels, how are you? Doing great. Excited to have someone really special on the line with us. We do have someone very special. We have Shaw Guerrero on the phone with us. And... Hey. Oh, hey, you there? Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> let me let me first I'm say. I'm so excited. I start to talk. I start to talk, and I get too excited. No, that, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, folks will probably know you when you was with the WWE when you perform under the ring name Raquel Diaz, but you're also a burlesque dancer, and you go under the stage name of Miss Nixon. So, how are yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, man. I'm busy, but um, I'm really enjoying this uh, this new phase in my life, man. Like, I'm finally in a place where I'm dancing here in Chicago, burlesque, and I'm choreographing. I'm doing what I love to do, and I'm finally in the wrestling community. Mm -hmm. uh, Shaw Guerrero, you obviously mentioned Raquel Diaz back in WWE, mm -hmm. but yeah, I finally get to be Shaw Guerrero, which is amazing, <laughs> um, on the underground and wow, so... Mm -hmm. It's a, I'm having a good time, man. <laughs> let's 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 start in Chicago. Um, where? Uh, well, first, what troupe are you performing with, and where do you guys perform? All right. Um, well, I perform solo um, for Vodzilla here in Chicago, and then I perform with the Vodette, and we perform all around Chicago. Uh, our biggest thing that we're going to be doing is going to be actually on Chris Jericho's Rockin' Wrestling Rager <laughs> Part <laughs> the. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Good. Oh, my God, man. We're so excited. But, yeah, we perform all the way um, here in Chicago, and, I mean, you never know. We might be traveling more in the future. Well, so. we got to, yeah, we got to get you in Vegas. I mean, it would right. just make sense to get you guys out here. And mm hmm Dude, don't even play. I love Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I actually go-go danced a long time ago in Vegas for my first time ever back when I was a wee 20-year-old. <laughs> and ah, it's so really? electric down there. I got to go back. Got to go back and perform. Now, where did you go-go dance at when you were down oh here in Vegas? God. Just curious. Honestly, I don't even remember, man. It was a small, small club. Like I said, I was like nobody back then. And I was <laughs> taking gigs wherever I could. And... Um, why was I there? I was there doing a photo shoot for a um, an agency I was with, and they were like, "Oh, we need you to go go dance." And I was just like, sure, <laughs> and it was just a tiny little club. Good times! Holy crap! I remembered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't even know if it exists. Well, that's the other thing too. The way the the club scene out here is, things turn around so quickly. Yeah, um, but you know that's uh -huh. you know that's the same thing in Chicago. Have you guys performed? at Because I grew up. In the Chicago area, so awesome. It, Whereabouts? Uh, Cicero, Illinois. Oh my God! Yeah. All yeah. right. I'm still learning all my neighborhoods and everything, but that sounds super familiar. You were like in the city, right? Right outside the city, Cicero is on the border of Chicago, um, and that was where Al Capone used to have his headquarters to avoid the Chicago police. So if they were after uh, them, they would go to Cicero where they couldn't touch them because they were out of jurisdiction and they had protection by the Cicero police. <laughs> That's pretty cool to know. Yeah. My husband would have known all about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my husband would have known all about that. He would have been like, oh, I know where that is. And Without you know what? Doubt. And so. also, fill in, since we, you mentioned, fill in for everyone who's listening and doesn't know who your husband is. 
Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's a guy known as Aiden English on uh, WWE SmackDown currently. Uh, he's also the new commentator on 205 Live, just saying. Yeah, uh, yeah right. So that's my, that's my hub. Mm-hmm. And you guys, did you guys actually meet at NXT? Oh, God. We actually met at FCW. Really? Um, oh, wow. So that was back when, back when I was Divas champion down there. And I was queen of FCW. I thought it was hot shit. And uh, he walked in as one of the new kids. And I was like, ew, who's the pale kid? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel awful. That was like my first thing I ever said about him. Um, but then like when I left and went to um, go take care of my eating disorder for a year, came back and he was this like new man super confident and the sweetest guy ever and we hit it off right away so yeah that's amazing that's so cool and uh it was fun love in tight does does he ever wake you up with a you know it's today is show day (laughs) thank god no (laughs) maybe he did i think i was I don't even know. I'd probably shoot on him and do something. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> let me ask you a question. Uh, what got you into burlesque dancing? Is it is it because you had like a background in dancing or, you know, what just attracted you to that? Okay. Well, I've always been a dancer um, ever since I was in middle school and high school. And, of course, I always loved it. But um, initially, my old manager, Randy Quintana, who actually does a lot of my um, photography now, uh, he actually introduced me to burlesque, like burlesque dancers like Kalani Coconuts, that's, who's based in Vegas, and of course, like Gita Bonjis, and you go on and on and on. Right. Um, but he introduced me to it, and I he was like, you'd be so amazing, and I just never really paid too much mind. I didn't really, really get into burlesque until after I got out of my recovery from my eating disorder. And it was the scariest and most intimate, um, shocking way I could, like a way of expression that I can use to fully love my body and accept my body. And yeah, I just kind of went into the extreme of here it is and I'm going to do my best to love it. And when I dance and when I do burlesque, I think that's the most confident I've ever been. I've just recognized that um, at 28. So I can't wait to see where it takes me in the future years of continuing to do it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. You know, and, and with that too, you know, do you find yourself when you are performing, um, is it, do you go to like an alternate, you know, like you said, confident side of yourself or do you just lose yourself? Like what's your mind frame? when you do that? Is it, is this like a, a freedom that you feel possibly? Oh my God. Yeah, man. Like that's just performing in general for me. Um, but I mean, I don't get me wrong. It, it takes me a little bit to get there. Like in the beginning of the song, I'm just like, don't fall. Don't, fall <laughs> don't be Miss Congeniality and fall. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, is, is everything in the right place? Is everything hooked? And if not, if I'm not even thinking about all that, I'm like, God, my song is so tight. <laughs> um, but after I get up over the dis- um, the discomfort of my court that's tight, my song's tight, I hope my pasties are on. Lord, <laughs> keep my pasties on. Um, but other than that, <laughs> when we get into the song, when I usually when the first chorus hits, that's when I'm, just, I'm somebody else. And it's, yeah, it's pretty freeing for sure. Is it... Um... <laughs> You know, I, I've been on stage since I was a little kid. As a burlesque dancer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. Love to see it, man. I would love to see that, too. Right. Actually, actually after this interview is done, Shal, I will, I will text you something that um, will actually be me doing a striptease oh uh, my but god it's nothing it's nothing dirty wow. it was on national television so well, don't slide don't slide that in her dms <laughs> <laughs> yeah just yeah it was on national tv you found that, but just uh fair warning and just like that just popped up on instagram somewhere so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh love it <laughs> right quite quite honestly it's actually it's on youtube so it can be found but anyway we'll get we'll get away from that for a second uh and uh but 
with with building a character which as a dancer you're still you know wrestlers do it actors do it but as a dancer you're like every single movement that you're making is part of that character and oh my god yeah is it like is it do you find going through the process of choosing music of choreographing the steps and everything do you find yourself you know trying to tell certain stories with the dance oh my god man yes and you understand then like being you know on stage and understanding it's not just getting up there and like i can do a kick or i can do whatever it's oh my god that's what i love about burlesque specifically yeah. um but dance in general is just like this is the character i'm doing this is the song i'm doing it to this is like every every costume piece every movement needs to have a purpose you can't just throw something in there that wouldn't be a part of your character my most recent burlesque was a possessed schoolgirl. that like <laughs> wow and it was, yeah and like it was for a halloween show which halloween but favorite but um, that's speaking my language yeah, is, <laughs> yeah well school girl isn't too hard to ram down people's throats but uh, yeah <laughs> the possessed part was she what was i was talking about <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah but it was the every routine has so much a part of me into it um i wanted to do a possessed school girl because i grew up hyper religious like almost like it it's almost a little destructive, like how how religious I was brought up and how strict. Like I wasn't allowed to dance for the longest time, and so this possessed schoolgirl was kind of my fu to all of that. And I was just going to go on the extreme, and um, yeah, every movement was super contorted and weird and gross, and but it ended up being hot and weird. So, but wow. yeah, I feel you. It's definitely a character study for each routine. Wow, each character for sure. It, that's that's something that we didn't really know is um now i guess i guess we should bring this up at some point but you are the daughter of vicky and eddie guerrero for those people who are listening who didn't know um so the the upbringing um was it you know small town el paso you know very you know cozy family strict religious was was it that kind of upbringing that kind of made you go you know years later like oh wow that was kind of fucked up <laughs> um you know what like oh, it was a mixture man because like initially i i did not grow up all the time in el paso texas i was only in el paso when i until i was five years old and moved to tampa florida okay and um and mom and dad were just trying to do the best for me so they initially put me in a private school that was like a super Baptist Ooh. like we didn't have dances the cheerleading uniforms were sad because the skirts Ooh. were all the way down to the fucking ankles mm. <laughs> um, wow. but like yeah like it was just really hardcore like super Baptist and so not that and if that's your thing like if that's how you find peace that's cool it just wasn't for me right mm -hmm. um, but but then when, when my dad found when he finally got into recovery and, you know, the way he came out of his alcoholism and drug addiction was through God identified, right. you know, through, um, like Jesus Christ and that whole, and that whole thing, which was great. And it did him so much good. Me, I'm an extremist and an addict as well. And I took like his beliefs and what my mom and dad taught me to like, the 10th degree and it was just kind of how i was built it just wasn't the right thing for me right mm -hmm. personally so yeah i just took it to another level and like the church we happened to be at was just super super yeah just really strict and very much like god will punish you mm -hmm. watch the lightning bolt. and wow. it just didn't work for me <laughs> no, i'm familiar with that <laughs> yeah dj dj yeah. yeah yeah dj dj is a very uh very uh well, I wouldn't say I'm very religious at all, but I came, my my mother is heavily religious, you know, but the, the good thing is that she never, she never pushed it on me. Like I've, I've had a lot of friends that have had that, that it was pushed on them and it's just, you know, knowing where they're at now, it's just been, you know, I'm, I'm happy my mom didn't do that, you know, and even today, right. you know, she's still alive. She's just. 
she just she'll still throw a word at me here and there, but she, <laughs> you know, but she still don't push it on me, yeah. and I think I thank her for that much of it. But I, I know what you're talking about, and, and um, I've I've seen the effects on what the has done for people who that is uh, pushed that up, pushed on. So you know, yeah, and that's like with any religion, you know. It's that's true. That, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's Baptist or if it's whatever. It's, you know, if you're forcing someone into it, it's just like with anything, if you want to share your beliefs, cool, do it with love mm-hmm. and with respect and kindness to the other person. Right. And, like, I'm sure we can find common ground. Like, that's yeah. fine. And if it's not your bad, cool. Like, it doesn't need to be a war. Right. And for some people, some people don't understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Def- you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that. It's because with me, and some of these guys know, and some of them don't. Um, I grew up in a very Catholic family. I was very religious. Oh. Even at 16, discerned the priesthood. Now, if you knew me, people would be like, what the hell? Because <laughs> I curse about wow. as much as a sailor and everything. And um, because I grew up in a family, it was just very core. I mean, I was a youth minister. Believe it or not, my father mm-hmm. taught uh, catechism, all this stuff. And it became a point to where one day I just woke up. And I kind of realized for myself, like, you know, the definition of what good and bad is and these people are bad, these people are good. It just was very confusing to me because in my heart, I kind of felt like that's not really what I'm seeing. Um, You know, besides the fact that little things that would pop up, like I love anything horror, anything dark. And that was something that when you grow up in a very Christian family, Mm -hmm. like, why do you like watching The Exorcist all the time? (laughs) You know those demons are going to come out of the movie and they're going to possess you. Right, right. You know, and and, and it just hit me to where I felt alone. Mm -hmm. I felt alone in this community. Was there any experiences that you may have experienced growing up, maybe similar, maybe, you you know, to where you kind of felt a little bit different and out of place? Literally, okay. So your example is hilarious because I watched what was it The Ring? Mm-hmm. Oh, great like, movie! Mm-hmm. When I was like, yeah, I was twelve years old, and my like all my family was pretty religious, but my um, one of my uncles was like, man, he was top dog. He like no one could top him in the Jesus Crispy. And, <laughs> like, like, we were talking at one time. I was like, yeah. Mom and Dad let me watch The Ring for the first time. And he was like, he pulled me aside. He was like, Miha? He was like, you rebuke the devil. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Do you make you go like, to confession? Really um, but yeah, but my dad was the same. And like, looking back now, like, I noticed like, like my dad was very balanced with, balanced with his Christianity and everything. He introduced me to horror. And I love that you brought that up because like, he showed me Bram Stoker's Dracula, probably oh. too young. <laughs> awesome it is my favorite fucking movie it is like my is it beautiful my it's so weird it's so beautiful it is a very beautiful like, romantic horror I, I could go on for days but i'm sorry i interrupted you yeah. no the same way and my dad like he it was funny because he justified it he was like um because my mom was like she shall be watching that and my dad was like no see he finds the lord in the end <laughs> it's true he does my mom was like <laughs> He does. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, okay. So it's fine. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. All the sexual craziness that was happening in the movie, which was fantastic. Um, but yeah, no, my dad loved all that. And not a lot of people know this, but my dad actually, if like, if he never found wrestling, if like he never fell madly in love with it, he actually wanted to be a horror makeup artist. Wow. Like, wow. He, yeah, not, not a lot of people knew that. And I knew that because we would go to Universal Studios and go to the horror makeup show and be like, I want to do this. Like, <sighs> I would love to do that. And yeah, he wanted to do that. He wanted to make Dracula, like, for real. Wow. Wow. But, Man, that's awesome. So I got to ask you real quick. What was your favorite yeah. scene in Bram Stoker's Dracula? I got to know. Dude, okay. Uh, I know it's hard to pick you know one. What? Like, <laughs> oh, it's so hard. So like when his, when um, Dracula and Nina are in that like room with like all the candles and stuff like that, and like I don't know, it was just like a super romantic kind of moment. And I think at one point when she leaves him finally to go with that you know uppity husband of hers or whatever, like he cries blood. Yeah. In that, mm-hmm. um, yeah. 
uh, I love that part for some weird reason. <laughs> awesome. No, no, no. It's, it, it, it was very well shot. And, um, you know, it, I think for that time period, it showed, you know, the beauty and, and sensual and romantic of, of being a vampire. Mm -hmm. So uh, good, yeah, good choice. Yeah. Good choice. So. <clears throat> oh, yeah, man. What were you going to be? You were going to be so pissed if I said Twilight. Well, that's oh, what I was, if you said sparkle, I was just I gonna. Know. I was just gonna say. So you're not a Twilight person then at all, right? Because that's not. That's, well, ugh. I like the story. I, I don't like the sparkle. I see, okay, I see the sin of it now as an adult. But man, I was a hardcore Twilight in high school. <laughs> like, wow. I was Team Edward, like so hardcore. My two best friends and I just like were obsessed. It was terrible. <laughs> I think a lot of people were. Yeah, you weren't the only one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's, I really don't know. But it's just really funny because those of us who, you know, grew up, uh, I grew up, um, well, again, Chicago, I grew up on Svengoolie. And mm -hmm. Svengoolie would, you know, show the Universal Horror films. And, you know, to me, I want it. You'd figure most kids would be afraid, but I want it to be in those films. I want it to be a part of that. You know, I wasn't afraid. I was intrigued by what this, you know, what was frightening about this. Because to me, it wasn't scary. It was, it was almost like you sympathized with the the creatures. You know. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You you humanize them and you try and understand why. Right. And and even that, I, mean, I just think they're beautifully shot and they're fucking cool. And I, I've always liked dark stuff. And, like, when it's suppressed for so long in your childhood, like, I think when I blossomed into adulthood, I was like, fuck it, I like it. And <laughs> probably a little too much, but that's okay. And um, speaking of that, you like the occult, right? Oh, my God. Yep, that's my passion. Um, if I'm not, if I'm not working on choreography or um, with my husband and our way too many animals, I am scouring Chicago for any Wiccan store, pagan occult store. Um, I'm reading. I'm studying my tarot. I'm like I buy way too much shit. Like I just have a lot of weird things in my house, and I love it so much. Okay. <laughs> so what's the what's the yeah, really what's the the difference between you and Aiden? Is Aiden into any of that stuff? No, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's really he's just a simple dude, man. Like he's um like I always thought my husband was like the coolest guy ever because I knew none of his music, I knew none of the movies he was he was into. Like I still think he's the coolest dude ever because I don't understand what he's into. Yeah. Um, and uh, like yeah, he's just I don't want to call him a history. He's not a history. He's just his own brand of whatever the hell he is. Um, nice. So, yeah, but he'll keep a good sport though. Like he'll go in, he'll go in the stores with me, and I'll just be like, oh, hey, oh, I need another crystal ball, or or this stone is good for this. And he and he's just like, ah, right, babe, whatever, whatever you want, I'll just sit here on my phone. <laughs> he's, he's really good That's beautiful. So you mentioned stones. Yeah. Do you? Um, okay, because because my mother. Uh, reads tarot cards and she also has stones and i grew up her telling me i have to put my stones outside to charge them in lunar some of them are you know charged in different ways have you gone that far into knowing Hell which no. ones okay i was just wondering because <laughs> i won't go too deep because my mom's like why are you putting my business on on the podcast but, but i grew up with a lot of that that stuff uh being from louisiana so you you, you speak in my language <laughs> No, I love that your mom's into that. That's amazing. Um, no, I just got a new stone. Like my stone is the moonstone, and I finally just got this amazing ring at the witchery in Galveston when we went to go surprise my mom for her birthday. And nice. um, yeah, man, like my sister was like, "Okay, good night," and I was like, "Wait, we need to charge like the stones and the rings." And she was just like, "Seriously, it's like full moon out." <laughs> I was like, "We gotta do it." Um, but yeah, I've I've gone that far. I wish I was a lot better. Like with my, my witchiness like i wish i could be really good at you know the holidays and what exactly i should be kind of eating or kind of like the essential oil of what should be happening out for the seasons but i i'm too busy right now maybe one day when i'm 
like older I can kind of really focus on it more and then everyone can go by and go you see that woman over there that's that old witch stay away <laughs> I, I tell Matt that all the time I was like babe I want to be that creepy ass woman that all the kids are like they run by our house are you because they don't want anything to do with me and I want a pet cemetery too like Matt oh, oh, nice <laughs> you're gonna have the kids saying you're a bruja <laughs> I want the little headstone for everybody. Like, oh. He's like, this is real fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing, actually. Um, Thank so, you. Maybe you can talk to my husband. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you, you know what? You, you know what the crazy thing is 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 um, it's 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 interesting for me because you know I've had in the past either friends or girlfriends that are just. Once they meet my mom, they say, oh, she's just this nice lady and, and you know, so sweet <laughs> and kind. And then when they get to, you know, be around the house, they see, you know, she has tarot cards. Um, you know, uh, I explain to them that, you know, me and my mom were both very empath empathic, you know, and, and it freaks people out. It's like, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> like, how? Because people have this imagery of, you know, people who, 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 who study the occult, they're immediately evil. And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. That's totally not the case. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought that up too. Because I mean, the way I was raised, it was just like that evil. That's of the devil, man. Y'all, I couldn't even watch Sex in the City because they were like, oh, <laughs> it was fun. Right. It was literally like I. And then when I was little, I couldn't watch uh, Jimmy Neutron. Do you guys remember? Jimmy? Oh, oh I remember God. Jimmy yeah. Neutron. <laughs> yes. Not Jimmy. Yeah. Well, I mean, his head like, was freakishly big. <laughs> He, yeah, but it was like weirdly cute, like in a way. Right. Um, but yeah, they were they were like they're atheists because they believe in science, and I was like, holy shit! Wow! wow. wow. <laughs> With Jimmy Neutron? <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh my yeah, God. yeah. Throw the crosses up, Jimmy Neutron. Um, but no, I feel you though, and that's like I feel like when people don't understand stuff, they demonize it when. And it's funny that people always claim like, "Oh, that's of the devil." When I'm like, when I'm like, actually, the devil's like nowhere near any of this. Like, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just all. It's just how I connect. I connect spiritually, and yeah. so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. How how then? Um, you brought up your sister. How different is she, or is she, you know, kind of close to? the same kind of beliefs that you have now? Um, you know what? Um, my sister's five years younger and she's like, and don't get me wrong, like our connection with like how we were raised with like our Christianity and stuff is still very much intact. Like right. I didn't forsake it all. Um, she's a little witchy. She, she, she's like, she, she goes, she just went in the witch shop with me and she loves, she loves crystals. That's her big thing right now. Awesome. But, um, my family, my family is very accepting. They let me do their tarot readings um, just over this weekend, and it was really fun. So <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you a question: um, Have you done any tarot uh, card readings over the phone? Oh, oh, wait, no. I was actually in Houston this past week. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just curious because so you know, if you want to do, if you want to read. Uh, a tarot card reading for me i i would i would be a, a willing participant oh would you if you'd be willing to you don't have to oh, no pressure oh that would be amazing i the only thing i'm still a newbie and so i don't want to give you some bogus ass reading like, <laughs> i i like i like having the person in front of me and having them shuffle their own cards and really put okay. their energy into what they need um maybe when i'm more seasoned though okay when i'm more seasoned i'd, I'd love to <laughs> or or when we get you out to Vegas, we definitely going to have to do that then. There right. you go. And as my treat for you doing that, I will treat you and your husband to come to Zach Baggins Haunted Museum, ah. which is a museum of uh, oddities, the occult, and um, uh, possessed items that's here in Vegas. And I think you would extremely love it. I go every year for my birthday and sometimes a little bit more so um okay. make that a deal yeah, when we need, well okay i think you know this you need to give me that instagram or however <laughs> the hell i can look that up because that sounds amazing yeah it's one of the it's one of the coolest um 
it's one of those things where they actually take you in uh, because of the size of the uh, the building. The building is actually an old building that they will not allow anyone down in the basement anymore because there's so much paranormal activity going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's thrilling. It's really an old place, and um, he has so many different items there that. They have to have it in groups of about, I think it's maybe like 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And you get a tour guide. And these tour guides are wonderful because they have the information. And they've seen some shit that can make you, you know, (laughs) turn ghostly pale. Yeah. And there are some of the most um, possessed items in the world. Like the Dybbuk box? Yeah, the Dybbuk box. The Dybbuk box. Yep. So, oh jeez, man! Oh, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm, which is crazy though. Like, I don't know how you guys are. I'm a real, like, legit scaredy cat. Like, I want to see it, but I'll be there, like, almost against my will, but not quite because I want to see it. But I'll like, oh, I'll be really fun to do it with. I promise. Like, well, I, I freak out. Almost. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. I went with, <laughs> I went with my buddy's girlfriend recently a couple months ago, because. He would not go because he was afraid that he'd take spirits with him. And when we got there, you know, we, we kind of laughed about it. You know, oh, he's such a, you know, such a wimp and, you know, suck it up and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then we get in there and the the um, the first kind of real possessed thing is Bella Lugosi's mirror yep. that he owned. Oh. And if, okay. you, if you look into this thing, really weird shit has happened to people. And as soon as I saw that, now I'm a Bella Lugosi freak. I love him and have since I was a kid. And I'm like, no way I'm looking at this mirror. Because (laughs) right away I felt like if I did, I was opening a portal because (laughs) I'm so into him. And so she she looked into the mirror. And as we're walking out of the room and stuff, she's like, yeah, that was kind of weird. And for the rest of the time, (laughs) the items that they had that were the highly possessed items both of us basically stayed away <laughs> because, oh yeah, because we didn't want to take, you know, we, uh, you know, it's it's scary no. when you hear the stories about people, you know, yeah. encountering these these spirits. You know, you are you do sign a waiver, by the way, when you go in. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You so oh, God. I'll definitely I'll send you the link. No man, I believe in bad energy. I hope you sage the shit out of y'all. Like I hope y'all got some sage. Out I of do. <laughs> I do. I sage myself regularly <laughs> I in my room. I also have a, a, a collection of, of stones and crystals, quartz, to uh, you know help with uh, balancing out any type of attachments I may or may not have. The only attachment I can't get rid of is debt, unfortunately. But I'm working on that. <laughs> I think we're all working on it. Yeah. No, I get to, and like, I, I love the occult and I love all of that, but when it comes to like spirits, I'm like, I do believe in opening realms. And, and even then, like, I get tempted to like seek someone out to communicate with my dad sometimes, but I'm just like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, it just, it wigs me out a little bit to just think about communicating yeah. with that other realm i'm just like oh, now i'm going my little crystals and my little tarot cards and good but <laughs> yeah. that. but you know that's and that's very interesting too um because you know i lost my uncle died in a motorcycle accident when i was uh, about seven years old and oh well you know it, it's part of life and you learn you know it, it was a learning experience at that age but one of the biggest things that I always thought was, you know, subconsciously, you always think that someone is with you. And one of the first times my parents left me at home alone and went out, I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I just wanted to go downstairs to grab some garbage pail kids. Very simple thing, right? You know, big, you know, big, tough 10 year old going downstairs. I walk into the basement and the stereo's on. And no one has touched the stereo all day. It's been off. And it was John Lennon's Imagine playing. And I'm like, oh nope. my God, it's my uncle communicating with me. I grabbed the garbage pail so quick. I turned off the turned off the, the tuner, grabbed those cards, and ran my ass upstairs and <laughs> just sat there going, Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like my uncle's communicating with me. What is going on? Mm-hmm. 
And then you're alone for the rest of the Absolutely. evening by yourself on your first time being left alone by your parents. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Hope you threw on a Disney movie or something. Yeah. Get your mind off. But I get you, though. I mean, I do like, like, I like when little things like that in my family would call it Sneaky Jesus. Oh. It's like, you know, when, when we'll, like, turn on the radio and it's, like, low rider. And we're like, oh, that's you. <laughs> that's or, awesome. Um, like, little things like that. But I've been noticing, do, do any of you guys, like, have, like, um, like dreams that like come true yeah. or, like, all the like, time all the time oh it, yeah. hap- it happens That's too awesome. much to be honest with you <laughs> waking you out a little bit <laughs> um more so because I'm I, out of my whole family I not really excited over anything of being too connected to the spiritual world my family is but yeah. me no I, I, I like having a normal life as much as I can try but it scares me a little bit sometimes too what kind of i got you what what kind of reality dreams have you been having lately it's like now we've we've um, just turned into dr phil now no no (laughs) right we have to be like cleo i'm about it though (laughs) come on darling Um, tell us about your dreams and i can interpret it for you (laughs) (laughs) she's paid 7.99 at 1-800 call cleo Oh my god! Um, No, so the most recent one I had, and they're not—they're not very like, like, what do I want to say? Like A plus B equals C. Like they're a little weird. But my most recent one is I woke up and I had this terrible, terrible dream. I have four cats, and I in my dream I dreamt that I stabbed each cat and I killed them, and I was like awful because I'm like hardcore pet mom um woke up and I was just real disturbed about it and my husband didn't understand he's like they're just dreams like they don't mean anything don't worry about it I was just in a real sour mood all day until um well that morning my uh, I just got a septum piercing and it was like really hurting me and I couldn't understand why it was off and I called my piercer and she's like oh just come on in I'll I probably just need to be cleaned and so we went, and um, I sat down in the chair, and they found out my piercing, like, my skin was growing into the, an opening on my piercing. Oh, and no. this thing is, like, yeah, this thing is, like, a week fresh, so it's still tender AF. And I ended up being up in the chair for over an hour, bleeding profusely, because they had to pierce me four times. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh. And I was like, "Whoa, that makes sense." And that's like, why they had the after dream. That happened, yeah, that's why I had the dream. And after that, I was fine. I had the best day after some pain medication. But like, yeah, it was fine. And but I was just like, "That's so crazy." Like in some way, I knew like that was gonna happen. But the piercing and the four cats and the stabbing them was just kind of funny. But <laughs> that's well, when three was What well, was wow. probably enough to get you to be alert enough. To be, you know, not to say that you would ever want to have a piercing go bad, but it was enough to alert you. And so sometimes dreams kind of do that, right? You know, I mean, you'll have a weird dream. You can't really interpret it. But if you think about it, step step back, you'll see how it's connected with something you were supposed to be open to receive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it, they're just, it's just crazy. And, like, I'm so into all of that, into signs and intuition and all that. Matt isn't, which is great because he keeps me down to earth when I can go a little bit too far into it. But, um, yeah, that's, I think we balance each other pretty well. But I feel like I, I love the dreams. Right now I'm just having a lot of reoccurring dreams, which are really annoying. Yeah. So it's like, fix this problem. Fix this problem. So do you remember a lot of your dreams? Like, like after you've had them, can you really- totally re- recount them? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, I always can, and it bothers me, because I'll be like, hey, what did you dream about when we wake up in the morning? He's like, I don't know, I forgot already. I'm like, how can you fucking forget already? <laughs> We're literally, like, a minute out of sleep. But, yeah, I can, like, write them down and, like, remember pretty vividly. But, like, can you guys? Are they pretty, like, well, like, kind of like my husband? <laughs> I, no, you know, one of the things, and I think this goes back to probably when I was in high school is when I first started really noticing it. Um, well, you know, when, even when I was a kid, when I was a kid, the first thing, when when you'd get sent to bed, um, but you were still a little wound up, what I would do is I would think about the Flintstones. 
and I would will myself <laughs> to dream that I was in a Flintstones cartoon. And that's the, Aww. yeah, it was the, the weirdest thing because I'd never thought about it or no one ever said anything. It just came to me to just kind of like use that to kind of like, you know, uh, make that. And then I saw Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> and then Freddy. <laughs> well, what's interesting is, is that I would try to force myself to have dreams to meet Freddy because I really wanted to meet Freddy Krueger. So, so time out. So you forced yourself to dream about a undead dream eating child molester <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> wow <laughs> holy shit man you're hardcore yeah. uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't think i'd be brave enough well in yeah. a moment i would not be brave enough <laughs> <laughs> but you know what what then what eventually i started realizing was the dreams that feeling when you wake up from a dream and you swear to god whatever it was you just dreamt it's still with you like you're you know your heart's beating a little faster you might be sweating a little or you just feel like like if you had a, a dream where you um like a close friend of yours or a family member or something passes away right you wake oh. up and like your instinct um or sometimes when i'm dating someone and i date like we broke up the instinct is right away i've got to find out if we're still dating <laughs> you know because it was so real oh, in the so real <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah barb was yes. telling you should break up no. <laughs> <laughs> i can do the same thing and like they feel so real something that else is, has been happening and like i haven't done this since i was a kid i'm starting to sleepwalk pretty bad now which wow. Wow. yeah well, yeah, that's... like when I was a kid, I had this super awesome scar on my uh, eyebrow because I was sleepwalking. I got a huge gash. Oh. Um, and then I like most recently I was I I guess I was sleepwalking because I would have remembered this. Um, got up in the morning, took a shower, and I'm like wa washing my butt, and then I was like, "Whoa, that's a huge gash in my butt!" Oh like, shit! This, I swear it's five inches long. This huge. Oh gash. my Whoa. gosh! Wow. And I was like, well, I would have remembered that. Well, that's cool. Something I get to cover up with makeup for burlesque. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, man. Yeah, but I'm like sleepwalking again. Oh, man. So is your husband well prepared and knows kind of what to do? Because, you know, they always say that, you know, when a person's sleepwalking, you don't abruptly wake them up or you're not supposed to. So, um, is he prepared yeah. a little bit? I mean, have some. He, he's pretty good about it because yeah. he's like he's handled me when I talk to him in my sleep and when I'm up, like like I'll get up and like like I'll be dreaming about spiders and I'll be up like brushing the spiders off me for like yep. five minutes. Yep. <laughs> and like and and he'll like he'll just gently talk to me <laughs> and then I'll go back to bed and he's about it. <laughs> and, but that's that's that. We might have to just have a discussion about the bigger sleepwalking kind of thing. The <laughs> gently guy that takes him back to to the safe zone of the bed. But I don't know. Yeah, we might have to talk about it. So is Matt the kind of guy then in your relationship who gives you playful then like teasing or you know little you know just little things about you having these you know different quirks let's say does he you know give you shit for that or is it like he just kind of brushes it off and just you know it's like uh... no we we have a very playful relationship but um awesome. he's a very sensitive person and i am too so we i feel like we know where the line is with us and when we cross it we're really good at communicating like hey that was kind of a dick move yeah <laughs> so, like, We'll we'll talk about it. We're we're pretty good communicators. Um, yeah, I think we 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 do have fun though. Like I think you gotta laugh in in your relationships, and you gotta you know make light of it. If we're too serious all the time, it's just like gets stressful. Because oh, I'm already a stressful as it is. Then it's, it keeps it light. Then it's like twilight every day if you're too serious. Oh, what a nightmare! <laughs> <laughs> Our interview with the vampire. <laughs> Oh man! Well, if you end up with it better than with fucking Teen Jacob, like who wants to end up with a werewolf? No. <laughs> this is very true. This is very true. Okay. So correction, shapeshifter. Shapeshifter, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, correct. 
because she just totally werewolves are way more badass yeah exactly (laughs) she totally just fucking killed the whole when she came up with this mythology that made no sense to vampires or werewolves so just like okay yeah yeah, no all right no (laughs) i'm done i'm done so um, yeah, it was for sure a teen series. It was for the teenagers, not for the, you know, the the horror, the horror minds or anything like that. The people that actually study and love the folklore of it. Right. Exactly. Well, I think also too. I mean, I mean, uh, it's one of our Kelly's favorite movies, especially with um, you know Jacob imprinting on a young child at such <laughs> oh, a young boy. age. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I couldn't man. help it. I couldn't help it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> It. Simon. You know that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stir it to um you know you talked a little bit about um your eating disorder and we um we haven't uh, released it yet but we talked to um, Buggy Nova Skylar Moon and yeah um, yeah so you guys were there at around the same time right? Oh, she told you. <laughs> well, well <I'm> <laughs> no that's okay i mean i i wasn't gonna uh yeah we um we were in that together like um not at the same time exactly but we we brushed shoulders um right. when we were there and uh yeah um well, it was a struggle yeah uh, i'm happy i had somebody else that understood like very intimately and while yeah. I was there, especially with the rehab experience attached to that. And I know she, you know, she was wonderful and shared, you know, her experience and is, you know, currently getting her degree um, to help others. Have you had a, a chance to, you know, maybe talk to, um, you know, some of the, you know, uh, teenage girls um, or some of the, you know, younger women in the like Chicago community? Um and you know explore you know giving a little um inspiration or a little you know support or do you just kind of you know kind of stay back from it and try to move forward with um what you're currently doing um i haven't done it specifically here in chicago because that's well i'm not gonna make an excuse i just haven't really um thought out as much recovery here in Chicago. It's I'm going on I wanna say eight years um abstinence Congrats. from um from all that. But uh but I did in Florida like I actually went back several years after I left my rehab facility and they had me back and I got to tell my story and everything and I'm always, always, always open to sharing my story with recovery. Like yeah. that's a given and I hope like with my following on Instagram or Twitter that I make that very clear and I guess um and I still struggle like it's, yeah. it's I'm not gonna lie I still like I'll have an emotional time where I emotionally eat sometimes or I you know it's just um or I, I've been having a lot of trouble lately just we have this awesome cruise line deal coming up with with Jericho and you know I'm Anytime I have TV coming up for women of wrestling, yeah. I always get that little voice in the back of my head that's like, let's just get thin. Let's, you know, take the fat burners and do the whole thing I used to do. And um, and it t- it's been really hard for me to fight it lately, but thank God I have. I have a really good support system and, you know, um, and I just have to push through that. But thank God I haven't um, broken my specific um, recovery kind of um, boundaries. Yeah. So I feel very, like, thank God for that, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I haven't had an opportunity here in Chicago. I'd love to be able to have that. Um, I'd be down for it any time. Yeah, it's it's one of, um, you know, to me, it's one of the more important issues because I've always, I've had the struggles, and mine has been the other way. It's been being the fat kid since I was a fat kid. You know, and losing weight, and then gaining weight, and losing weight, and then gaining weight. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a, it's amazing. Like you said, when you emotionally connect something, like, you know, that little voice in the back of your head, just saying, "Hey, you know, you you got this coming up. You know, well, well why why can't you go 
and do a little this, you know, and it's like just constantly fighting mm-hmm. yourself going, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm okay to be yeah. who I am. Yeah, no, I get you. And it's like, it's so hard and it's so against our culture yeah. to accept your body as it is right now instead of like, oh, I'll be happy when yeah. I get into this or mm-hmm. I'll be happy when I'm um, this thought or whatever. And it's just like, and it's crazy because that doesn't help anybody. Like, right, I'm, I'm in my studio right now and I'm reading, like, I write on my mirror and I'm like, I wrote something down. Um, I was like, eat balance to reach physical goals. Your body is what it is. Um, it's beautiful and worthy right now. Yeah. And like, that was me on a bad day. <laughs> like, yeah. just like, don't over exercise. Don't, yeah, like, you got to go eat after this. And, and then when I have a bad day, like, I don't need to necessarily go on, like, a fast food ranger, right. you know? And it, it's hard, man. It's, it's a struggle every meal. Mm-hmm. I well, get it. Well, All and right. also too that the 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 great thing is 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 <clears throat> for me, uh, my ex wife actually uh, did did struggle. She was a gymnast um, at a college mm-hmm. in Utah, and um, she struggled with an eating disorder. And I really didn't know about it until after we were married, and um, I had never had any exposure. Um, that close or ever got a chance to talk to somebody and and she was able to kind of break it down to me she's kind of what you were saying like pressure would come up or deadlines and whatnot and then also on top of that uh, you know having to meet a certain weight requirement as being a gymnast and she would just say that 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 was she felt like was the only way that she would kind of like relieve herself and um, uh, it it, she as well uh, got help for it and she would you know, speak to younger, you know, younger kids um, about it, of the pressures, and it, it, it. I find it very inspiration, inspirational uh, that you are able to reach out to people because you, you never know how much of an impact you make because there's so many people that are struggling with this problem. There's not that many studies. They're only just now really starting to have studies and really talk about it openly. Um, with young girls like my daughter is 14 and she's a cheerleader and I remember they brought in you know a a dietitian but they also want to talk about making sure that you're healthy and have an open dialogue and um, I want to say because I have a young daughter thank you so much for 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 taking the time to share your story and to hopefully anybody you know who's ever struggling with the eating disorder you know uh, you know where can they find you on your Instagram because you know you might reach somebody who thinks they're alone and they have no one to talk to. No, thank you. I really appreciate that. And it's, it's just, um, that's extremely humbling because I still struggle and I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but if we can just communicate that with each other more instead of what had you have a 14 year old daughter, I can't imagine how hard it is growing up, not only just being a woman and then also like just, dealing with the normal shit we all had to deal with, but also, like, the era of Instagram and Mm -hmm. these young kids and what perfection looks like and all of these facade things of, like, this is my life and it's this perfect, beautifully photographed thing and it's not like that. Right. And so, and even I have to remind myself, like, why don't, it's like, do you need to go put on a full face of makeup to take an Instagram picture? No. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like, it's like, oh, I feel bloated. I shouldn't take a picture. No, fuck that. Like, we got to be more real. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, no, um, like, well, that, you, that you, you telling me that inspires me to be more real. So, it, thank you. Not and a you problem. Just, sure. You just made a very good point that, you know, I just, it's funny because I don't really think about it until we're talking like something like this. And that is, on top of all these pressures, then these companies come up with these filters for Instagram Mm -hmm. and it's, Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just like, you know, yeah, everyone's out to, you know, achieve this perfect image. And yet in reality, the perfect image is the one you see in the mirror. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow. We just got, I'm like, I'm so glad. Oh, we went deep. Yeah, exactly. We were really deep. (laughs) Might need a drink. 
I know, right? Why are we doing this over cocktails? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, what do you guys drink? I have to ask since my husband is the bourbon king. Um, um what, what, what what's your drink? I like bourbon. I am a whiskey guy. Very much. Right. Um, yeah. I love me some Jameson, but right now I don't know why I got a sweet tooth, but I am hooked on the freaking uh, peach Crown Royal. It is a sh- it is oh. a shame. It is a shame how many Crown Royals I have bought. <laughs> um, but I am in school, so that's my excuse of why I'm drinking a lot and there my fourteen year old daughter. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad. I think I think on my end, uh, the Matt Michaels drink would be uh, the White Russian. Um, it's a oh. nice, yeah. It's just a nice little thing. I I'm not a heavy drinker. I'm honestly, um, I've I've been a uh, a pot smoker since uh, college years. So, um, and not in a you know, hey, I'm getting stoned to get stupid. Um, you know, I'm very. Uh, controlled. I use it actually uh, at night to deal with uh, pain from uh, injuries over the years. Oh yeah. And um, no, yep. Yeah, and it just you know I like to have a drink every once in a while, but you, it's rare to see me with a drink. And speaking of rare to see with a drink, mm. DJ Impact here. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> every time I it comes to uh, my order, it's usually a strawberry daiquiri virgin, please. And I get laughed at. Oh my god! I know I get laughed at, and uh, talked about. But that's okay. If it's you know cute. what, I, I it is cute. Thank you. <laughs> and you but you know what, I, I have. Like it. I wish to you. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm. Your drink, babe. You have your drink. So hold on. What you're really trying to say is that you know somebody's got to drive. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna feel bad. I mean, you're like you got a virgin babe, so I'm gonna have another. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But I will share this with you, with Mr. Impact. Yes. We were able, at least in the time I've known him, we did have a great opportunity mm-hmm. to actually have him have a fireball shot. And I was so proud. I was kind of like that guy. You know, like when you have a friend that that finally gets laid and they have memes about it where you're looking, you're just proud and you almost want to cry. That's how I felt about him. Because for the longest time, I would try to be devil's advocate. Like, come on, I have a drink, man. You need one. And he would be like, no, I'll just have my Jack Reed. You know, finally had one, and and I was just a proud, proud friend, man. Hey, every blue Very moon, I, I'll throw one down. But you so know. what you're saying? Every time you, know you have I'm a blue moon, you'll take a shot. There you go. Oh, did you hear that? You know, so y'all are mean. You like gave him like a terrible shot, though. Yeah, but, like, I had to start him, him off somewhere. You <laughs> <laughs> gave him like the meanest, like one that hurt all the way down, like all the way past your culo, man. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I bet you, I, I bet you, felt it on his cool low too later on. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that spicy food. So, right. No, but what? <laughs> you gotta give him like a nice smooth tequila. Oh, yeah. you're gonna be shot. Now, Not see, me. he's gonna do that alone because I, I have bad experiences with tequila. I turn into a little bit of a different person. I'm not angry. I'm not angry at all. For some weird reason, when I have tequila, I think that I'm you know, chatting Tatum and Magic Mike. And so that's why I'm not allowed to have <laughs> tequila at all. Um, well, now I'm intrigued. Well, yeah, what's, you, you, may, you may be disgusted you after you them. see it. <laughs> once, once again, now we've got two of us who have admitted to uh, live stripping at one point in our lives. So. <laughs> Hey man, you know what? Like stri- stripping is a profession. If that's what what what, what you like, that's fine. <laughs> right. But it's funny because like I, I teach a move called the Channing Tatum in my uh, I teach here in Chicago too. Really? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have, yeah. I'm gonna have to see your Channing Tatum compared to what I interpret as Channing Tatum. I feel like they might be different. Well, mine is kind of like the the thrust round type of chatting Tatum or chatting on my Tatum or however you want to put it. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. It's like That's dad bod version, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know what though? A dad bod is a hot bod. Thank you so much. You know what? Could I like hire you to like scout and find me women that are cool with the dad bod? Please. I will I will pay yeah, you. Man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Um, um, like dad is hot. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so we we got what Matt's drink is, and w- w- what is on your menu? 
Oh God, right. Um, well, my husband has gotten me into whiskey. I'm a big um, E. H. Taylor fan um, of that whiskey, but um, yeah, and that one I can actually sit straight. Wow, but, impressive. Um, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm not as hardcore as my husband, but I I can get there. Um, but like. Uh, honestly, on a really shitty day, it's an extra dry uh, martini with olives. And if it's kind of, a, uh, honestly, my um, my shameful drink, the, the one I'm a little shameful of, um, it's sparkling wine. Oh. So, hey, now. It, it's a little, I feel a little ashamed about it. <laughs> oh, well, well. It all depends on how much you drink. <laughs> How much do we drink? And now, how much? How much of it do you drink? That's where the shame comes in. Oh, oh God! Well, <laughs> it depends. Like, um, so I had um, my Vaudette, the burlesque troupe I'm in. Um, they were all over at my house uh, for a photo shoot not too long ago, and um, uh, you know what? The amount that I drank that night uh, of champagne is a little. Um, disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, we did champagne bombs. Have you ever heard of a sham bomb? Champagne bomb? No, no, mm-hmm. I have not. Please it's, explain. It's, um, no, it, it, it looks like a champagne glass, but then there is a right angle of like a tube that is supposed to connect to your mouth, and you just pour the champagne, and you you just take it like like a like a beer bomb. You Holy know, like, oh, you wow! Do it like a champ, and it hurts. And it's very worth it. There's a lot of pride after after you didn't throw up. And so, yeah, I can say I did that. Awesome. I'm in, the try comfort that. Of my own, in the comfort and safety of my own home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the, be- that's the best part, yeah. pretty much. You're right. Um, oh, yeah. So let me ask you then, and I know this is, again, we're going to get a little deep here, but um, knowing your dad's, um, you know, history that he had, with his you know problems of uh of abuse was that something that you're always aware of as well is to make sure that you know you know this could be something that could be genetic or is it something that you feel like i'm good i didn't get that but you know yeah no um i i love that you that's a really good question uh, for the longest time, I didn't drink very heavily, and I never did any kind of, you know, drug or anything like that. Partly because, yeah, my dad scared the living shit out of me about it. Um, yeah. And I am an addict, and so what I am addicted to is the food and the perfectionism of my body. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's my drug. Um, I'm always aware, um, me and Matt are very, like, Matt, um, my husband never, he, he's very, very balanced as well, and we always check each other, like, ooh, like, we had a, like, a big family weekend, and there was a lot of drinking, nothing too crazy, but, we're like, so we're, we're just gonna slow down for a little bit, or we're, we're very balanced when it comes to that kind of thing. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's it just depends on what your drug is. Like, my dad always told me, he was like, you know, drinking, for me, he was like, it's a sin, it's a, it is a big, fat no-no for me. He was like, but your mom, he was like, she can have a beer or two and she's fine. Yeah. It's just everybody has their drug and their demon. And so, I just know what mine are. Yeah. And, but yeah, I am aware. I am very aware, though. It's, um, thank God I've never gone into any heavy drugs or anything like that. Um, yeah. So, it's, uh, but I feel like I know better. Right. Um, yeah. Because I saw my dad in a lot of different ways. And, yeah. So, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, I think one question that I would sure? actually like to ask you is, you know, what are any ambitions or things that you either have lined up or that you'd like to do for the future? Like, like what do you want to do in, like, five years? Where, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Yeah, um, well, I have a lot of exciting things coming up that are fueling me for more dreams and ambitions. But, uh, well, my husband and I, we were trying to actually have kids um, pretty uh, soon. But then I got the cruise ship deal. And so, yeah, no no bigot for the next year. And that is totally okay. Gotcha. Um, but 
Uh, no, I want to perform, and there's just some amazing clubs here in Chicago that I would love to become a regular at. Um, there's Untitled Supper Club here in Chicago. There's Bordell. There's just so many amazing venues for burlesque that I want to be in, and I'm so invested in the burlesque shoot that I'm in. Um, it's run by two amazing, amazing women, Amy Bender and um, Honey Ria. Um Nice. They're fabulous, and they've let me in a lot more into um, just how things work, and I want to take those girls with me everywhere I can. Um, a huge dream of mine is to have my own rock and roll burlesque group. Nice. Um, so cool. I just, nice. Yeah, I would love, and like I've been noticing, there might be an audience for merging wrestling and that. Yep. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so... And, and um, yeah, and you've heard of um, in LA because uh, I was out there for twenty years. Um, you know, for almost a decade. Yeah, I think it's been a decade now. They've been doing the uh, Lucha Vavoom, and that's exactly you know they hit on the thing of combining burlesque <laughs> comedy and lucha. And there's a yeah. there's definitely a lot of yeah there's you, you've you've got I think you've got a very good vision <laughs> let's put it that way I think you got a very good vision I would love to be I, I have seen that and I have thought about that and I'd love to bring my vibe possibly um, to do something like that or they're not my thoughts I'm sorry but I call them my thoughts and they're my girls. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I would love to do something like that. I, I'm just now getting comfortable with it because I think for the longest time I was, I didn't know how people would feel just with how respected my dad and my mom are yeah. mm -hmm. with seeing that. And so, but then I'm finally realizing like, I'm not just Eddie's daughter. I'm not just Vicky's daughter. Right. Like, this is how I express myself. This is how I, this is what I am good at. And you know, if there if there's an audience for it, then that's amazing. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm still still figuring that out, but I'm thinking there might be a market for that. I think you're. So. I think you're absolutely onto exactly. There there is definitely a market, and I think because even um, just this past weekend at the the or uh, the Orleans Hotel here in Vegas, they had the um, Rockabilly Fest going on. Oh, yeah. so cool. And that's another... I love that. Yep. That's another, you know, kind of merger of the cultures where, you know, that's mm -hmm. an audience right there. I tell you right now, hands down, they'd throw down money to see a combination of burlesque and wrestling and music, you know. I mean, yeah. You, I see it. I see, I, I see your vision. Yeah. I, <laughs> You got my money already. Awesome. Yeah, just, yeah. just, just let me know where to make the payment to. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So that's kind of like the big thing on the heart. I want to get us into tattoo, like, like tattoo conventions and all yeah. that kind of really big stuff. And so um, that's what I'm working on right now. And that's what I'm thinking. But um, and we're moving to the city. Uh, we're in the village right now in Chicago, but we're actually moving to the city this year. Where, so, uh, where um, are you guys right now in the burbs? Oh, uh, we're we're in a uh, Downers Grove, so it's kind of a big suburb, but yeah, um, sure, it's, it's cute. Well, Downers, cute. and you know, um, you know who um, who grew up in Downers Grove, as I will relate this to wrestling, is uh, the pa the Poffo family, Randy Savage. Yes. Yep. He went yes, to Downers Randy Grove Savage. South. Yep. Yeah, they have this like little like hollow like what like they have a little back of him um god what high school did he go to matt knows my husband Down, matt. downers grove south uh, downers grove south downers grove south yep okay okay yeah and so that's um but yeah it's crazy right like small time yeah but I, well i just um, and i just yeah, look I, i'm just sorry i've just looked up here on matt's uh on his uh wikipedia i didn't realize until now that he went to lt for high school yeah <laughs> which again uh, oh, no. it's a small world because yeah i spent some nights with some great people from lions township high school uh oh 
<laughs> what do you mean oh. spent some nights? I was just right. I'll leave. <laughs> yeah. Was it in a room? Was uh, it? I mean, was please it? Please indulge. It was yeah. high school. It was high school guys. It was high school. <laughs> yeah. It was, so so you spent you spent a night with high school guys in a, in car. a car. Yeah. In high a school car. guys in a car. Yeah. All right. I want to know that story. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you, you did some parking with some LP alumni. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, hey. We all park. Exactly, exactly. Um, so you guys then, where, where are you guys moving into the city? Um, we're looking at a couple of areas, but um, we're looking at Worker Park and mm -hmm. Bucktown, and uh, I work a lot in Uptown. Yeah. Uh, like kind of but i'm hoping like i said to be kind of sprinkled throughout chicago and so uh but like the city city so i don't know it's dude it's hard to find real estate that will take five animals yep not yeah. lie. yep mm. has enough space in like a good neighborhood that you know you can walk right like two blocks over and you can hit like a cool hub so yeah. it's hard but we're um, we're looking for real estate pretty vehemently over here. We're really excited to get down there. So yeah. out there, I don't know. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's kind of it's nice too that you know um, I'm assuming Matt's family is still in the area. Is that correct? Yes, he has the most amazing family. Um, so we're going to be a little sad that we're not going to be like you know skip you know skipping a jump right there, but. Right. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad drive. You know, we're, we're still keeping our car. Oh, parking. Parking is another oh. thing. A part of Chicago. Well, get get ready Dude, to... Dude, I thought... I was going to say, get ready to, to get a chair that will be your designated chair to put out for your parking spot in the wintertime. Seriously? Like, I had no idea how... It, well, first of all, I'm from El Paso, Texas, man. We <laughs> don't pay for parking in El Paso. Nope. Yeah. So when Matt told me, <laughs> when he would bring me to Chicago, and he was like, okay, we gotta um, park the car when he would take me into the city, and it was like 50 bucks, and I was like, are you effing kidding me? Yep. I was like, for a couple hours. It, yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. The, but the, we'll find it. <laughs> well, and, and the good thing, too, is if you... Um, if you get a nice area, I you know what? So many of my friends who live in the city still they bicycle around, and that's Yo, really. I'm terrified of bicycles. Like the bicyclists scare really? the shit out of me. <laughs> just... I'm afraid I'm gonna run over them. Or even then, I bet if I get into a big intersection, I'm gonna be too scared to like <laughs> do what I gotta do. It's weird. It's I don't know. I can't. I, 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 um, maybe I'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bicycle, not a not a not a motorcycle, but just a regular bicycle. Wow. Dude, I would feel more safe on the motorcycle. <laughs> wow. Because like you get to like stay in the same traffic pattern. Yeah, that's whereas what I'm like the bicyclists, like and like don't don't fuck it. Like sometimes they like they'll just run red lights or they'll just yeah. like I don't I don't know like and everyone does it like. I guess just in general, whether you have a car or a bike, but I'm I'm not brave enough. Not on so your ride. People, <laughs> no, no. But like, I'd rather have a motorcycle. That was always like a, a dream of mine. It probably won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two questions I got to ask before I forget. You talked about wanting to do something with tattoos. Do you have tattoos? Mm -hmm. And if so. Give me some stories about some of the, your favorite tattoos that you have. Most like you'll say all of them are Whoa. your favorite tattoos. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I've lost count to how many tattoos I have. Um, <laughs> that's for real. Just because literally I got two more like last week. Um, oh, wow. It, it is a guilty pleasure. I, oh, my God. No, no guilt. No guilt, man. No guilt. <laughs> all right. No guilt. Maybe it's just me because yeah, I feel guilty for spending the money. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I feel you. When you got expensive skin, you know, it, it takes a toll. Yeah. Um, no, but, God, uh, what is my favorite tattoo? That is so hard. Okay, um, I'll give you my top three. So, on my left arm, I have um, a Day of the Dead um, woman, and uh, she basically, she's like holding a finger to her mouth, like uh, like the shush kind of thing. Oh, and she has awesome. um, she has the eating disorder symbol on her forehead. And so it's basically silencing my disease 
nice. of, eating, of the eating disorder. Nice. So, love her. Um, she's dope. And then, uh, let's see. I think my... Oh, God, it's so hard. It's so hard. Um, so, on my ribs, I have a quote that my dad said um, that... Let's see. Well, I can't. I can't read it right now. <laughs> but it's like I'm. I'm. A, what is it? I'm ashamed of what I've done, but I'm not ashamed of what I did to correct my mistakes. Wow. And so I have that on there that speaks really loudly to me. Um, wow. With like these markings all around it from like a book I used to love to read. It had like these really cool like cryptic kind of. Um, designs and flourishes so uh, it's got that on my ribs and then my recent ones I have um, on my middle finger I finally did finger tattoos wow nice. so um, why <laughs> no no nice nice no. nice oh thank you I heard yeah. why no oh, like, I no get no that reaction a lot. I get that reaction a lot actually um, no I have my um, my two middle fingers tattooed one has a crescent moon for, for my witchy my, my newfound witchness, and then on my other middle finger, it has a cross for where I came from. Nice. So to represent my Christianity. So yeah, That's and I'm pretty gonna cool. get more because the fingers are addicting. They're, 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 they're very, addicting. they are. <laughs> so then, my yeah. second question yeah. is: is introduce us to your fur kids? Oh, can you <laughs> hear them right now? Because they're like. Little um, I can only that. imagine that they are wanting your attention. We are stealing attention from them <laughs> uh, if they are there. But I need to know your fur kids because they are your kids. Oh, they are my kids. Um, all right. Well, we have four cats. Um, my, the ones I personally adopted are Sushi and Factory Bink. Oh, um, is that from uh, Hocus Pocus? Thank you, sir. Yes, Zachary Banks. <laughs> you know. Awesome. Ding, 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 ding. Bonus point. Yes. Um, so those are my two. I, I'm like a sucker for black cats. I love black cats. Um, and then we have Jack, um, as in Skellington. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Adopted last October. <laughs> Another black kitty. Um, and then we have Isa, who Matt rescued from a car engine. Wow. Uh, back when he was at yeah. Yeah. Um, he was with uh, Paige, and like they were walking to their like apartment complex. Like, I guess they were in the same like building, and everyone was gathered around the car, and they're like, oh my God, and there's a cat in the car engine. And Matt had these long ass arms, and he, you know, fished her out, and um, they were like, oh, she's hugging you, and really her claws were like inch deep into his shoulder. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he took care of her, and so she's a she's a good girl too. She's our one little white fluffy cat. Oh. Um, and then we have a new addition, um, Willet. Willet the dog. She is a puppy, Aww. five month old puppy. Oh so Aww. all rescues we like adopt, don't shop. Yeah. But um, yeah, those are my babies. And I have a third bonus question: Out of all of your cats yeah. and your puppy, which one have you chosen to be your familiar? Well, I wish I could choose. I think they choose me. <laughs> They're all your familiars. Why not? <laughs> I, I wish. I wish they all were my familiars. Um, and I still don't know if I if it's actually a true familiar. It's hard to to make that distinction between pet and familiar. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure, weirdly, like my ugh, I shouldn't have a favorite, but my my baby is Sushi. Um, oh. I wish she was my familiar. But Jack is my familiar, actually. He needs to be around for any ritual I do. He needs to be in the room with me. Like, he paws at all my um, my candles and, and everything like that. Like, he's, like, weirdly, like, into all of my my, my witchiness and all that. Like, he's just very attuned to me recently. So, I'd say he's my familiar. Jackson. Awesome. So does he get kind of like Sabrina the Teenage Witch is familiar and like like transforms as a as a changing and and, and defends your uh, life? Because that would be really cool. I, I wish so hard that the fantasy magic would be on TV. Is yes, up, is real. I I wish so hard it is. Although I am pretty obsessed with Sabrina the Teenage. Same Witch, here. So How are you liking season two? 
Oh my god! It's so good. It's so good. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Um, I won't spoil it for you. I love it. Though. I love the dark vibes it, it's giving off, and I like Sabrina a little edgier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah Far Cry uh, from Melissa good. Joan Hart. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. And I, I was like, this is what I actually wanted when I was a kid. Like so hard was for Sabrina because when I didn't get to watch it until I was like in my 20s because I wasn't allowed to watch it and then when I did watch the read the teenage witch I was like this is it oh. <laughs> too much comedy so when this came out I was like finally yeah <laughs> what this needed to be the whole time well it's and it's interesting so. too because the, you know with the success of Riverdale as well yep they're it's connected. like the whole Archie universe is like this cool hip dark brooding crazy universe and when we grew up archie comics were like these like wholesome fun you know hey mom and pop type things and now it's like totally dark and brooding i love it now i will share this with you and i don't know if you know do you know riverdale and sabrina are still w uh w uh, warner brothers own properties and they were even talking about possibly having crossovers from the cast of riverdale onto sabrina and sabrina onto uh, Riverdale. So if that does happen, oh, that will be uh, super exciting. Yeah, like you know what? I have to. Admit, I haven't watched Riverdale yet. Oh, you're and missing so out. So I, I need to though. My best friend's even been pushing me. She's like, "Why aren't you watching it?" Yet? Sir, um, sir, so did you? I have to crown. Did you ever watch Twin Peaks? Oh, it's another awesome show. No, I only know that as a restaurant here in Chicago. Uh, it's, it's a restaurant out here, too, and right. it's like Hooters. Yeah. Oh. That's what Twin oh. Peaks is. But no. Right. Um, then that makes sense. But the, uh, yeah, exactly. But the the television yeah. show, it's something definitely check out because it's in that same, you know, talking about dreams and kind of dark and brooding and that. Um, that time ripple and that beyond it's got all this stuff there in the you know the three seasons and the movie that they have that you'd uh, okay. you'd really yeah you'd really i mean riverdale right, and right. twin peaks check those out all right those are on my list right after game of thrones Oh, oh yeah. so you're watching Game of Thrones, or have you not? And you're gonna <laughs> yeah. watch it. Oh my gosh! Insane. So let me ask you this question, okay? Do you feel that um, Giant's Milk will replace the Blue Pill? <laughs> wait, well, wait. Say the last part. Will replace who? Will Denarian? Yeah. No, no. Will um, Will Giant's Milk? Well, oh, let me ask you this question. Did you see? Uh, this past Sunday's episode, I just want to make sure because I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. So you did. Do you, do you think uh, uh, Giant's Milk will replace Viagra? I can't understand what you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I think my mic's all jacked up. <clears throat> so last week there was a big talk about knighting somebody ten times, and uh, the person said that you know I drink. Reason why I'm so strong is because I drink uh, Giant's breast milk. Basically, do you, do, do you think that that will replace uh, the blue pill for men in the future? Joking, oh, of course. <laughs> that joke was probably lost, but it's okay. The blue pill is a little bit easier to inject than that uh, giant milk. That was the most disturbing. It was very, thing. yeah, it's so awkward. It was so awkward, but I love how hard he wants Brienne. Oh, he like, does so I bad. Love how, how he just. He's haunting her, man. Like mm-hmm. he, he doesn't. Oh, I love it so much, though. Do you think she'll cave in Brand eventually? Wow. <laughs> uh, so, with Game of Thrones in mind, uh, is there a favorite character that you have? Um, I love Brienne. She's really cool. Um, but for the long time, I loved Cersei. That's like, um, how she can make you hate her. So, so I just like maybe just some like acting ability to like. I, I always love the heel, like that. That's always my, yeah. my favorite. And so, Cersei Lannister. Um, oh God! But then Tyrion. <laughs> Everybody loves Tyrion. <laughs> I know. So you know, I'll be a little bit more original. I'll go with Cersei. Awesome! <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Well, I think on that note, we'll uh, we'll start to wrap up here. Um, 
um, really quick, uh, we've got to say that you know when we uh, called you before we start the interview, we did express how much we love your mom. Um, Vicky is just so sweet and just wonderful, and um, we really appreciate you. She did the show um, you know, last month, and uh, we just uh, got to say that um, if we are running a competition now. Yeah. Boy, it would be hard to choose between you and your mom if you like, if if people were like, so who are like, who's the nicest person in the world that you've met so far in your life? <laughs> because you guys, I mean, Aww. you guys are just so wonderful and sweet, and it's very reflective of how your parents did, you know, uh, raise you, and um, you know, it's just, I mean, obviously, there's, you know, again wrestling is something that we all come from in some aspect you know to this wrestling thing as a, a you know a life a business uh a, you know in your case you know family for years and years and years but you find then that common thread that shows you just these wonderful you know personalities and and how nice and and great people can be because you know in the end we're all just you know human beings uh trying to make it through this life and um you know that's more important than you know my dad was a wrestler who was really famous or my mom was the general manager of you know a television show you know <laughs> in the end and you know you've you've come a long way and you've got such a bright future ahead of you and that's why we're we're so excited to talk to you Oh my God, you guys, thank you so much for having me on. It's very refreshing and don't get me wrong. My family's legacy is something I'm extremely proud of and it's um, very humbling and um, the weight is heavy as well, but it's also, um, it was really refreshing that you guys wanted to hear about me a little bit more and um, what I'm doing and what I love and um, I hope I can do you guys proud, but thank you so much for, like, this was su super fun. <laughs> I had so much fun. You can make this a weekly thing over oh, drink. Hey, hey, I'm, hey. I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. You know, I, yeah. will, I will say this on that note. Um, really, truly a humbling experience to get to know you. Really, I have to say. Oh. Um, just super awesome personality, great energy. Um, you know your stuff. I like to uh, throw out questions when people talk about, oh, I like certain movies and, and, and dark stuff. And you, you pretty much hit every every question spot on. So uh, I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And uh, like I said, definitely look forward to the next time. Yeah. So. Hell yeah, there will be a next time. With sure. drinks. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, just to sum everything up, we just want to remind our listeners that if there's anyone that has a, a eating disorder, or maybe you're not sure, but you, you think there's a possibility you may, there are, there is information out there. One of them is the nationaleatingdisorder.org. Just visit the site. There is a helpline number. Um, there also has a screening tool that would also uh, help you get you to the right people and it's 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 definitely something that um, you should look into and and take uh, serious so that's one thing there that would that could help you out one last thing also we was talking about um, or Shaw had mentioned she adopt pets there's an adopt a pet dot com if you go there put in your uh, zip code it would actually give you information as to where you can go and adopt a pet. And Whoa. and that right there is is great information there. Shaw, we thank you for, for inciting us with all of this today. And um, hopefully this will also help others to go and make uh, just the great decisions that you've made as well. Thank you guys so much. I'm so glad that you tagged all that information. And just know, like, whether you're... Um, woman or man or whatever it's eating disorders affect everybody and um they're not necessarily given as much uh 
I guess, um, debt as other addictions, but they are serious and they are real. And there's so much help out there, guys. If you're not alone, whether you're hearing this um, from me on here, if you want to follow my Instagram, I do talk about my eating disorder um, pretty regularly. And so, um, yeah, just know you're not alone. Awesome. And your Twitter, your it, it seems like you're at Guerrero underscore Shaw. That's correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, is there anything you want to promote last thing that you, uh, anything that's happening that you want to let everyone know? Hell yeah. Okay, you guys. So <laughs> I will be on Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager Park Duh. Um, right. you, I be- yeah, man. I believe that there are still some cabins available. I will be there with um, my primo Chavo Guerrero as well as my mom, Vicky Guerrero. Um, the whole family's coming. It's going to be awesome. And not only that, you guys are going to see um, me debuting with the Vaudette to the audience of um, wrestling fans, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Really cool stuff for you guys. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. So definitely hit us up. Uh, check out Chris Jericho's, um, ChrisJerichoCruise.com. Uh, and you guys can see the lineup and any other information you need. Thank you again. This definitely won't be our last time having a conversation with you. So thank you very much, y'all. Thank you guys so much. Till next time. All Til right, next time. Thank you so much for checking out that video. If you liked what we did there, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, slap that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you can be a part of the notification squad. Follow us on social media, at Vegas Bad Boys with a Z, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And until next time, we will see you in the next video.